एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल लर्निंग विद पेस आई एम प्रियंका गोर एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू शॉर्ट क्रिस्प एंड डिटेल्ड एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द चैप्टर लॉस स्प्रिंग रिटर्न बाय इन ईज जंग सो हियर इन द स्टोरी शी नरेट्स बेसिकली स्टोरीज ऑफ टू यंग बॉयज हु बिलोंग टू इम्पोवरिश्ड फैमिली एंड थ्रू दिस स्टोरी शी वॉन्ट्स टू टेल द रीडर्स दैट हाउ दीज बॉयज आई मीन दोज हु बिलोंग टू इम्पोवरिश्ड फैमिली दोज चिल्ड्रेन हु डू नॉट एक्चुअली बोर्न इन अफ्लुएंट एंड वेल्दी फैमिली दे हैव टू चर्न आउट देयर ड्रीम्स दे आर नॉट इवन अलाउड टू फुलफिल दैम एंड फॉलो देयर पैशंस राइट and look at the whole title lost spring so here spring is denoting or referring the childhood and the happiness the innocence uh, that you have when you are a child now that happiness that childhood is lost right and poverty is something that has stolen the childhood right so in this chapter she is talking about the poverty the impoverished conditions of these two boys first one is sahib e alam the second one is uh, mukesh all right now in this video i am going to give you the explanation of sahib e alam first then we'll move further to mukesh's stories okay now Uh, you know the very first story is about sahib e alam and the title she has given is sometimes i find a rupee in garbage now before moving further what you need to understand is sahib e alam is who actually well sahib e alam is a rag picker rag pickers are somebody who shuffles the garbage and picks up the valuable stuff and that valuable stuff like for example the watch cloth shoes anything right that valuable stuff is been referred as gold all right so rag pickers what they do they shuffle the garbage pick up the valuable stuff and put them up into their rag that's how they are rag pickers all right and sahib e alam originally is from uh, dhaka dhaka is capital of bangladesh but since a war happened in 1971 there so that's why many bangladeshis they left uh, you know dhaka and bangladesh basically because dhaka is capital of bangladesh so many people left bangladesh and they became refugee in india so they came here and settled in simapuri that's in delhi right now i would say precisely that's on the periphery or outskirts of delhi right now they settled there but without legal permission so you can say these all being uh, you know bangladeshi is people they were squatters uh, that time and still many bangladeshis are squatters right squatter means uh, having no legal permission to live right now sahib e alam is amongst them basically his family also came from bangladesh and they shifted to sima puri that's in new that's in delhi at the border of the delhi now uh, as i told you sahib e alam he was a rag picker so always early in the morning he comes out shuffles the garbage puts up the valuable stuff into the rag or his plastic bag right so one day actually anish jung asked him that why he does this how this happened basically this boy sahib e alam right this boy sahib e alam he every morning right he goes to a garbage dump that is nearby author's house or you can say author's neighborhood so he goes there shuffles the garbage and picks up the valuable stuff now that's why anis jung you know on a on a daily basis she used to encounter with him right so that's why she asked him why does he uh, why does he do this so that time you know what he replied he says that he has nothing to do rather than shuffling the garbage right anish jung asked him why he does this why he shuffles the garbage that time sahib e alam replied that he has nothing to do that's why so that time anish jung asked him doesn't he go to school so he replied well there is no school in his area if somebody will build definitely he would go but after asking that when uh, you know uh, <clears throat> anish jung asked him that if this if uh, you know he goes to school or not that time she felt you know this question is quite hollow this question is quite meaningless because 
a person who is not even having a shoes or clothes to put on how he can afford to go to school right so she felt her question is quite gullible her question is quite hollow but anyway uh, nonetheless she asked him about school and he replied that he doesn't go to school because there is no school uh, in his area nearby simapuri so that time in half joking mood anish jung asked asked him that if she starts a school will he come so that time sahib e alam replied yes definitely he would come so one day sahib e alam saw anish jung and he ran towards her towards her asking about is the school ready so when sahib e alam asked this question to anish jung that if the school is ready that time uh, you know anish jung felt quite embarrassed because she did such a promise about school or starting a school which can't be fulfilled right so in reply in and in embarrassing tone she says that you know it takes time to build a school over and couple of months she started knowing uh, sahib e alam but she still doesn't know the name right so that's why out of curiosity she asked sahib e alam his name that time he announced that his name is sahib e alam well now anish jung telling all the readers you know sahib e alam means lord of the universe and she at the same time says that sahib e alam would be having hard time believing the meaning of the name why look at the contrasting situation the name means something like lord but in reality what he is doing he is picking up the valuable stuff he scrounge for gold gold here refers to uh, the valuable stuff basically that you find in garbage right or i would say the discarded stuff well the discarded stuff is a dream come true or a gold for a poor people right well anyway what i was telling you is uh, you know anish jung says look at the reality what he does he shuffles the garbage garbage but the name reveals something very very different from what he does now couple of months uh, you know over a couple of months she started knowing each and everybody well this boy sahib e alam he used to live with his army right army of rag pickers all were children they used to remain barefoot and if not barefoot some of them used to wear discolored or mismatched shoes or the discarded one shoes having holes in them right so now one day she asked one of them like one of the a boy uh, she asked him uh, why he is not wearing chappal so that time he replied like one of the, you know one of the boy who is in the group with whom the question is been asked by anish jung so this boy replied that his mother did not give him chappals from the shelf that's why he did not wear meanwhile the second one interferes and the second boy says that his mother would have given him uh, he would have thrown them away and this boy who is interfering uh, himself wearing discolored or mismatched shoes so right now anish jung asking him that why he is wearing mismatched shoes so that time he did not reply anything he just shuffled his leg just to try uh, you know just to hide the color of his uh, mismatched shoes basically right so now uh, meanwhile the third one also started saying something and he said he also wants to buy a pair of shoes now anish jung came to know you know these people why they remain barefoot because of their poverty but she is telling all the readers you know what she has traveled across the country she has been to village into city she has seen many boys and army of barefoot rag pickers remaining barefoot and one explain whenever she used to ask them like why they don't wear slippers chappals only one question or sorry only one explanation she used to get is that it is their tradition that demands them to remain barefoot so now she says how can a tradition demands you to be barefoot all the time so now she wanted to actually tell all the readers that it is just you know their excuse to hide poverty in the name sake of tradition well uh, since we are talking about only slippers and chappals that's how she remembers a story that has been told to her by a young man who belonged to udipi that's in karnataka state and this young man he told her the story 30 years later that you know when this young man was a boy he 
you know while going to school he used to pray in the temple where his father was a priest he used to pray just to get a pair of shoes and one day he got a pair of shoes the goddess granted the wish but after even getting the shoes he used to again pray that god never uh, let these shoes be lost so here can you see a boy who is you know uh, basically in priest's family not having shoes and now he's praying to get the shoes and after getting the shoes he is again praying now after 30 years he she and he's young she wanted to visit the same town udp and she went there she visited the same temple in which this young boy used to go right like before 30 years ago so she went there now the temple is in air of desolation but there in the backyard a new priest has come so this new priest's boy having everything is quite grateful he's quite blissful he's quite affluent how come he's having shoes he's having uniform he's having um, you know chapels he's having uh, socks he's going to school so now after looking at the scenario she's comparing two scenarios 30 years later and after 30 years now what she is telling all the readers you know what 30 years before a priest's boy had to prayer to uh, gain or to buy a pair of shoes basically but 30 years later you must have seen the priest's life is being developed now the priest's boy doesn't need to do this uh, pray and all in front of god and goddess to get the pair of shoes now here she is actually telling us that in everybody's life you will find a sort of change a positive a positive change but in drag pickers life there is no as such change like before 30 years they used to remain barefoot in fact after 30 years they are still remaining barefoot right uh, now she says that uh, you know, one of the acquaintance from this army asked uh, Anish Jung uh, to go to Simapuri. So, actually, they literally, uh, you know, um, took Anish Jung to Simapuri. Now, uh, Anish Jung is telling us Simapuri is at the periphery, but metamorphically, it is not the part of Delhi. Why? Because, see, this Simapuri um, actually at the periphery, at the outskirt of the mainstream Delhi, right? And how come it is away from Delhi? How come it is not a part of Delhi metamorphically? Well, though it is reality is a part of Delhi, but understand my point. Well, people living in, uh, you know, mainstream, they are having good condition. They are having pakka houses. They are having blissful life. They are having primary and basic and every sort of facilities, right? But people living in Simapuri are in bad condition. If Simapuri is a part of Delhi practically, then why Simapuri's condition is very bad? So that's why she says, though it is a part of Delhi but metamorphically it is not a part of Delhi it is away from Delhi because people living in Simapuri are in totally bad condition now she tells us that all the Bangladeshi people in 19 most of them in 1971 they came uh, and they settled in Simapuri why they settled in Simapuri reason being wilderness well Simapuri back then in 1971 was an abandoned area empty area nobody used to live there so that's why they came here right because they need to find something where they can stay so Simapuri that time was an empty place and they decided to stay here as a squatter that time in 1971 Simapuri was a wilder place but now here it is no longer the case now Simapuri is not actually um, you know a wilder place here 10,000 drag pickers near around 10,000 drag pickers are living living there but in very bad condition their houses are made of mud there is no roof they have to make the roof out of two things they put thin sheet of tin and the tarpaulin sheet that's the plastic material you use uh, while it is rainy season so that the, re the roof can be leaked proof right at the same time you must remember there is no sewage in Simapuri there is no drainage system in Simapuri and people living in very very filthiest condition there is no ID they are having there is no ID card they are having well why they would be having ID card because for survival you need food not ID card right but they all having only ration card why ration card actually when your name is 
uh, own ration card i mean when you get your ration card your names get enrolled in um, in voters list and then you can cast the vote when you cast a vote you become a citizen of the um, you know certain respective or certain um, country so well these people all these rat pickers they are not having any id they just have only and only ration cards with ration cards they can you know cast the votes they can get their names enrolled in voters list and in return they get either free food or food at a very cheap rate i would say well the food is of very bad quality uh, now in seema puri she actually had a conversation with group of women sitting in tattered sari tattered means very dirty and torn sarees basically so actually uh, now anish jung asked them why they left dhaka so that time these women they replied that they had, they had house they had fields but they were famished they were actually not getting food so that's why they prefer to live where wherever they find food so this is what the reply anise jung got when she asked them why they left dhaka where they were having houses they were having uh, you know very green lush uh, fields so these women replied they would prefer rather living uh, you know as at such a place where they would be having food their children go to sleep without having stomach ache you know that happens out of hunger right so that's why they are living in seema puri now she says anish jung is telling us that wherever they find foods what they do they pitch their tents and that's how their home is quite transit the temporary one they are not settled people well you know rag picking is what rag picking is having two different meaning how come well rag picking is <clears throat> gold to them all right now she says for the elders elders means these children's parents and for children this garbage denotes something else for children it is wrapped in wonder because you know children are quite happy when they find new stuff but for their parents this garbage is just a mean of daily breads and just a mean of getting um you know uh, getting food and their survival if the question comes like for children garbage is what for these children living in seema puri garbage is gold wrapped in wonder and for elders it is just getting the daily breads and the means of survival all right now um after this uh, you know when she was taking around in seema puri sai be alam told her uh, that sometimes he finds 1 rupee or sometimes 10 rupee note in garbage while saying this his eyes got lightened up so here anish jung is telling the readers that you know look at this child's innocence he feels happy whenever he find just 1 rupee note or 10 rupee note and you know what if they find silver coin if they find um, you know silver coin means the small valuable stuff they don't stop scrounging they scrounge they they search more and more they shuffle more and more to uh, you know to get gold basically suppose if they find ek i'm you know i'm just giving you one example ek example there you suppose if they find a watch right uh, well i'm not wearing watch this time well if they find a watch they stop they don't stop scrounging they scrounge more and more to find more valuable stuff than this watch you know it gives them a hope over a period of time they get their skills in shuffling the garbage and it becomes a fine art to them now after this one day she saw that saheb is looking at a game and saheb is telling anish jung that he likes the game but he doesn't know what kind of game it is well he was watching tennis game right that time out of innocence saheb alam jo hai he uh, you know he tells एनी इज जंग आई मीन उनको एक चीज बताते हैं दैट यू नो दिस गेट कीपर ही लेट्स हिम यू नो एंड ही अलाउ हिम टू एंटर इन टू दिस फील्ड बेसिकली वेन देर देर इज नो वन अराउंड एंड ही लेट हिम स्विंग देअर टू राइट वेल एट द सेम टाइम शी नोटिस दैट साहिब आलम दैट टाइम वियरिंग टेनिस शू साहिब आलम यू नो वियरिंग टेनिस शूज एंड यू नो दीज टेनिस शूज 
white in color looking very weird peculiar with his mismatched shorts and shirts now asking him why he is wearing these white shoes uh, with mismatched shorts and shirts that time the kind of reply she got is sahib alam said someone gave it to him so any is chung come to know uh, certainly that these are the discarded shoes because these shoes tennis shoes having hole in them and it must be given by some rich boy and look at this you know this hole in the shoes is not bothering sahibe alam it was bothering that rich boy who discarded these shoes but it wasn't bothering sahibe alam reason being the person who has remained barefoot so getting a pair of shoes moreover they are uh, having holes well getting a pair of shoes is a dream come true for such a person right now one day she saw that sahibe alam is uh, having a tea canister over his shoulder and you know now he was going to his uh, uh, milk booth basically so that time sahibe alam tells her that he got the job and 800 rupees he gets per month at the same time the meals uh, the meals right the food he gets of uh, three times and he told anis jung that he got the job in tea stall so now she says anis jung says that you know now this boy sahibe alam is not at all happy though he uh you know he is getting 800 rupees getting meals but still not happy why is it so actually it is a very important point you need to remember now anis jung is telling us you know what when he was a rag picker he was carefree he was master of his own life and he used to carry this plastic bag though it was heavier in reality right but it used to be you know he used to carry this plastic bag as if it is so light why because this bag belonged to him but now he has to carry this uh, steel canister where i have written <clears throat> well he has to carry this steel canister in reality it is quite have it is quite lighter as compared to the plastic bag but uh it seems quite heavier for him reason being this canister doesn't belong to him it belongs to the shop owner so now three things you need to remember here why in why sahibe alam is not happy though he got uh, the job he is getting money right well he is not happy first reason is right now he is not carefree well while he was a rag picker he was carefree second reason right now he has to work under somebody else in the tea tea shop or tea stall but he is not the life of his own master once he was a rag picker he was the master of his own life two reasons i have given you third the canister that he has to carry in tea stall doesn't belong to him that's why it seems quite heavier to him it belongs to tea shop owner but the plastic bag he used to carry which was quite heavy right it used to seem like lighter one for him because this plastic bag was his own that's why right now at the end what you need to understand see how this sahibe alam you know his spring is lost how the story is justifying the title well because of poverty he had to do this job right now he is not happy in his job he is not carefree that's how his innocence is lost though while he was in poverty like in he was doing this rag picking and all but he was the master of his own life that's why he was happy right while doing rag picking he was in his innocence stage he was having happiness finding joy and you know finding happiness in shuffling the garbage but right now due to this poverty thing or impoverished condition he has to work under somebody else where he is not ruling his own life he is not the master of his own destiny so one more thing you need to understand you know children are being exploited when they do some work right so that's how their innocence their their happiness that is uh, stolen by poverty only right so again i would say you know those children who are not born in affluent family in rich family 
poverty uh, you know uh, it just steal their happiness it just steal their innocence and that's how their spring their childhood it is uh, vanished now let's continue with the story of mukesh so she has given the title to this story which is about mukesh basically and the title is i want to drive a car now mukesh is somebody belongs to uh, he belonged to basically firozabad and how the story starts well mukesh is somebody who wants to become a motor mechanic so this is what he is uh, telling this to anis jung so after this anis jung asking him does he know anything about cars so that time mukesh replied that one day certainly he will learn how to drive a car now anis jung is telling the readers that firozabad is known for making glass bangles it is famous in fact for making glass bangles in each house in each family everybody is just occupied in making bangles right and amidst such environment among such people mukesh is having high dream to become a motor mechanic right mukesh doesn't want to follow this uh, family lineage business which is uh, bangle making and he wants to become a motor mechanic so this is what she says that his dream it looks like mirage mirage means which is unrealistic wish right then she says that firozabad is a center for making glass bangles and people are working there generation to generation they are in this business of making glass bangles right at the same time she says that it seems like you know women in the corner or around the world they get their glass bangles only from firozabad this much of bangles they make or produce right one more thing she says that not only eldest people in fact uh, children are also busy or occupied in making uh, bangles right uh, glass bangles and it harm their uh, their health basically right it is not good for their health well she says that in firozabad since children are also occupied in making uh, uh, you know bangles so these people are quite unaware unaware of the rules and regulations and the laws that is been implemented by our uh, uh, you know government so she says that people having you know lack of knowledge regarding this thing they do not know they are totally unaware that it is not good for the children to work in such an environment and it is illegal too it is against the law so in what kind of condition our children can't work first when there is hot temperature and when there is dingy cell that means when there is you know dark or dim room and there is when there is no window no air passing through no light is there so in such condition it is illegal for the children if they work there so you cannot force the children to work in such an environment right but people living in firozabad they hardly know about anything related with legal stuff so now later on she says that if this law is being implemented and forced you will catch 20000 children from there who slog day and night in making glass bangles at the same time she says that you know these children before reaching up to the adult age they end up losing their eyesight so reason being well reason is one that you know these uh, children they you know slog i mean they toil 24 into 7 in dark dingy room and their eyesight is more adjusted to the darkness than to the light outside and that's how their eyes can't bear the light outside and they are you know the pupil is more adjusted to darkness and uh, th this is the reason you know before each before reaching the adult stage they end up losing either their eyesight or their brightness now uh one more thing she says that mukesh is somebody uh, you know amidst such environment where every children is just busy in making bangles whereas mukesh is somebody having such big dream of becoming the uh, motor mechanic and one more thing the garage is quite far away from his house so when you know anis jung is bit curious to know about uh, like you know if the garage is quite far how would he manage so that time mukesh replied that he would walk down to the garage but certainly he would learn how to become uh, you know a motor mechanic right he wanted certainly wanted to become a motor mechanic so there is this zeal that you will find in his heart 
Now Mukesh's eyes quite light turned up when he wanted Anis Jung to take a visit in Firozabad and this is what Anis Jung did. So Anis Jung took a visit in Firozabad what she found that streets are quite narrow and the lanes I mean the street are quite you know um, Street, streets are quite stinking why it, you know it was having the foul smell reason being the garbage that was littered here and there on the street at the same time she found each and every house wasn't properly made they were the half built shack basically made up in you know hovel form like in like it was a slum area having crumbled walls that means as if the wall will the walls would uh, fall down right away and the doors were wobbly and in every house in every family what she found that animals and family members are living together as if uh, you know they are in primeval state they are in prehistoric era okay now they stopped at one such house that was half built and one more thing Mukesh wanted uh, any junk to take a visit of, uh, of, of his house reason being he um, got excited while saying this that his house has been renovated so Anis Jung is kind of having a hope that his house must be uh, you know properly built but right now when they stopped at such half built hut she came to know it is not properly even renovated right well uh, after entering into the house what she found at one side there was a firewood made up of thatched grass and the sizzling I mean she is telling us the scenario that the sizzling of uh, spinach leaves could be uh, heard uh, from there from that corner right at the same time she found that on ground there was a big aluminium platter on that vegetables were uh, you know uh, kept there in the chopped form and uh, the food is being prepared by a frail young woman frail means she was quite thin and she was the daughter-in-law of the house so you can say the this Mukesh's elder brother's wife basically so Mukesh is having elder brother and uh, this elder brother's wife is making uh, the food and she had to take a charge of three men in the house which is Mukesh, Mukesh's father and Mukesh's elder brother right and it is a tradition in uh, in this house and not only in this house in fact in india it is a tradition when an el elder one you know enters in the house a daughter in law is expected or bahu is expected to get up and um, uh, hide herself somewhere else and then wail uh, i mean she should keep a veil basically on her face she should cover her face whenever elder man is there so here in this family the eldest one is mukesh's father who was quite impoverished and this man was a tailor earlier but right now he is a bangle maker throughout his life he got failed many times he did not make a proper house he did not uh, you know even renovate the house properly he did not even send Mukesh and his brother Mukesh's brother to the school whatever he has done till this life is teaching them art of making bangles so after this Anish Jung is you know bit flummoxed that why he changed his profession like earlier he was a tailor then why there was a need to come into bangle making business so that time Mukesh's grandmother she replied she says that it is his Karam, Karam, Karma, right? So basically, uh, Karam is something your destiny that is predestined or written by God. So she says that it is his Karam, God has given him this work, and if God lineage uh, is there, you cannot break it down. And this grandmother, you know, um, she also suffered a lot because her husband also ended up losing, uh, you know, his eyesight, all right? So now, uh, Anise Jung is telling us that in Firozabad, you will find bangles everywhere, right? Spirals of bangles. I mean, the circle of bangles you will fi find everywhere. And how they make bangles? Basically, they pick up the glasses and they weld, they sold together, right? I mean, they join the pieces of the glasses and giving them, by welding them, giving, giving them a shape of uh, circle and later on polish them with the dust, all right? And that's how, you know, it is quite harmful for their eyes now she says in Firozabad you will find um, numerous bangles of each and every color no, it be it paddy green or blue or anything right or pink or whatever the seven possible color that you find in um, rainbow at the same time by mixing them 
so whatever the color is possible to make each color you will find in these bangles and she says that these bangles are so much in uh, you know quantity that you will find piled up in unkempt yards and at the same time you will find them on a hand cart which is pulled by young men to sell them off and here she says that Firozabad is a shanty town. Shanty town means roughly built town. Town, sorry, roughly built town. She says that you know, in in this roughly built town, you will not find any house properly made, right? That's why she is referring Firozabad is a shanty town. Now later on, she saw a young girl, Savita. She was wearing drab pink dress, faded pink dress, and her moves, uh, you know. Her moves of making the bangles were so mechanically. I mean, she was very fine with making the bangles thing basically. And at the same time, she says, Anish Jung, that Savita is sitting with an elder woman. But Savita, being young girl, she doesn't know the sanctity of glass bangles. But one day, she would certainly come to know what is the importance or symbolization of glass bangles. And Anish Jung is telling all the readers that glass bangles having a having a purity attached with it basically in indian women it is considered as a symbol of suhag and savita will certainly come to know once she would become a bride she would be having hina on her hina mehndi on her hand the red hina mehndi and the veil uh, would be there on her face made up of red color right so one day when she would be a bride that time she would come to know that what is the importance of having this um, glass bangles. Now, Anise Jung says this elder woman uh, who is sitting with Savita, she knows very well, elder woman knows very well the importance of glass bangles because many, many years ago she uh, became a bride, right? And this elder woman is wearing glass bangles right now, but she's not uh, having a proper eyesight. She lost her eyesight or brightness. And this elder woman telling Anise Jung that uh, that means they did not even have a full plate of meal and this is the ring you will find and this is the similar story you will find in um, in every family of uh, Firozabad because each and everybody is moreover occupied in making uh, you know bangles but at the same time they did not have a full plate of meal now she, Anise Jung is having a conversation with this elder woman's husband and her husband says that entire his life what he has achieved is he has made a shelter for his family now after listening this and he's young is telling the readers you know one would certainly wonder because this look day and night and still many people are not able to buy a house but this man uh, moreover having this business um, had the capability to make a shelter for his family now later on and he's young says that since children young men they are forcefully uh, occupied in this business and at the same time they are trapped in in middlemen how can they be uh, how can they uh, be trapped by middlemen actually middlemen is somebody who is having uh, money with them rich people they borrow they lend money they and their money is being borrowed by people living in Firozabad right so ek example lete hain suppose this is the father of the family and he's quite poor belongs to Firozabad now he what he would do he would actually take money from middlemen right now middlemen uh, in this you know after giving the money he would put a quite huge amount of interest so that can't be pay off by father right so the interest he cannot pay the money he cannot pay so that's how this father is being trapped by middlemen but if the father is not able to pay then the baggage would have to uh, you know somehow this baggage would have to tolerate by their uh, children right so fathers and forefathers and their baggage that goes or carry forward to where their children so that's how these young men they are occupied in making uh, business and they are they are being trapped by these middlemen since their fathers and forefathers not able to pay all the debts right so that's why and he's just asking these young men that make a cooperative a legal firm against these middlemen and against the child labor so that time you know these 
group basically what they replied these young men they replied that if they would make a group against middlemen and against this uh, uh, child labor so uh, they would be hauled up by i mean they would be dragged by police beaten up and they would be put behind the bars by saying that they are doing something illegal all right now later on in his young saying that uh, you know the problem the root problem is that they are not having any leader who can show them the right path now that's why she says that these people they move in such a circle from poverty to apathy to green to injustice right like poverty they are poor lack of concern people show towards them and again they are also not having the lack of concern the greed here that means you know the greed they have to face the greed of the middleman of uh, the vicious circle like the bureaucrats and the politicians and the rich people right this is the greed they have to face and the repercussions if they uh, speak against them right if these young men they speak against these these greedy people the repercussions at the end they have to um, suffer that is the injustice right that injustice again happen with them right beta now uh, right bachcho now uh, with flow it happened well uh, right now she says that in firozabad there are two types of uh, Uh, family or circle i would say first one is these poor people they are in a web of poverty they will not come out of this poverty so easily and moreover they are having the stigma not only the eldest people in fact on young and the children one they have this stigma that they are born in bengal making caste now you must remember what is bengal making caste actually these eldest people in the family the fathers and forefathers they put on the pressure Uh, on the children and young people that the they have to follow the bangle making uh, business reason being they are in such a caste where they need to make bangles only because this is the destiny uh, they have and this is the uh, the business given by god so this is the thing they have to suffer basically and the second circle which is quite vicious uh, where you will find bureaucrats highest officials basically policemen legal authorities and middlemen money lenders basically so this vicious circle they uh, you know put on the baggage on the fathers forefathers on the young man on the children right and it's quite difficult for the young men and the children to put down the baggage reason being they have since childhood they have seen that their fathers and forefathers have uh, heard or have tolerated or the torture given by these uh, uh, you know people who comes in vicious circle basically now later on after having this uh, you know scenario after hearing all the stories after observing so many stuff anis jung felt quite cheered why she felt cheered why reason being she, uh, she had a sense of flash uh, regarding mukesh and see she says that any this um, Uh, Anish Jung says that Mukesh one day will become a motor mechanic. He won't be in this web of uh, poverty. Mukesh is having a zeal in his heart that one day he will come out of this business or family lineage or this stigma which is Bengal making caste. Now she says that since Mukesh is having a bravery or a dare thing, well. one more thing in firozabad nobody is allowed to uh, you know occupy or go into other business reason being again the stigma that is bang, uh, you know the 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 baggage they have to carry which is like you know bengal making caste thing but again one thing nobody is having a dare to come out of this uh, business and it is quite courageous in firozabad when you want to go into other business but mukesh is having this courage and that's why anis jung felt quite cheered she felt happy now she is asking uh, you know mukesh that is he having any sort of dreams to fly aeroplane that time mukesh replied no he is not having any sort of you know such dreams but he is not regretting while saying this why because he has entire his life seen hurtling of the cars i mean moving of the cars here and there so that's why he is having a dream of just or you can say his dream is quite limited to cars only because this is what he has seen at the end uh, anish jung is telling us that uh, you know barely a uh, barely an aeroplane that fly over firozabad so that's how mukesh's dream is quite limited to uh, you know driving a car or becoming a motor mechanic right 
so this was it and at the end she tells the readers indirectly and directly that one day mukesh would become a motor mechanic for sure thank you so much for watching this video if you are still occurring with any doubt comment sections waiting for you and you can dm me on instagram if they are not you want to join then of course you can follow my telegram group if you want me to take uh, the live sessions uh, for the doubts basically of course i will come uh, but again you have to drop a message there in the comment section or anywhere on the social media platforms and uh, yes and do join telegram group because there i'll be sending very uh, essential material for your board exam thank you so much for watching this video this is priyanka gaur i would like to sign off with that